Loïc, uh, colleague of USRF, will uh, present his work. And uh, I leave the floor to him. Thank you, Mathias. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Loïc Uder. I'm working at USRF as a software engineer. And today I'm going to present you the work we've been doing on F5 Web, which is a web, uh, FK5 web viewer and a data visualization library. So first of all, uh, let me address the question, why would we want to develop an HDA5 web viewer? Well, first of all, HDA5 with the Nexus convention is now the standard format for data acquired at ESRF. And so we want to provide user with software uh, so that they can easily see and explore their data. And also, uh, as for the web part, uh, there is a rise in the development of web application, notably at ESRF. And we, we want to get on the board with that because web applications are inherently remote, which is quite important, uh, which was quite important during the COVID time and still important right now with lots of remote working and things like this. It's portable because then it's, uh, every user has a web browser and then doesn't have to install anything to run in a web application, just run into the browser. And it's interactive, as I said, because it runs into the user browser. Uh, it's quite responsive to have good interactivity uh, with the user. And so that's why uh, from these two statements, we saw that we needed a software to be able to efficiently visualize and browse HD5 file content in the web. And this software had to be flexible to be easily integrated into other web application developed at ESRF and outside ESRF. And I uh, stress the two points here that are the efficiency and the flexibility. And you will see why in the uh, following slides. So here comes H5Web to answer this question. Um, H5Web is a project based on React, which is a JavaScript framework that we choose at ESRF to develop our web application. And uh, uh, let me just tell you that H5Web is open source. All the development happens on GitHub. Uh, you can uh, check out the links that I will give at the end of the presentation afterwards. Um, H5Web is made of two packages. The first one is called H5WebLib. It is a data visualization library. So it's just a way to translate uh, data in the web into graphics, right? Like Matplotlib, but in React. And then we have H5Web app, which is a full-fledged HDF5 viewer that made use of the visualization that we developed in H5WebLib to display data sets uh, contained in HDF5 files. So I'll make a small demo. Uh, yeah, I'm furious uh, of the viewer later, uh, but I will talk a bit about uh, H5WebLib first. So H5WebLib is a data visualization library that we developed ourselves at USRF. And the reason we did that is because at the time when we did a survey, um, we did not find a data visualization library that was efficient enough to deal with the huge data sets that can be contained in HD5 files. And so, well, we decided to build our own. And uh, because we wanted such efficient visual visualization, we uh, use a technology called WebGL that allows to do the GPU rendering of the visualization, uh, the, that allows to render the visualization with the GPU. And for that, we leverage two packages that are called 3JS and React Free Fiber that are originally to render 3D scenes in the browser. And so the job of H5WebLib was to take all these primitive to render 3D scenes and to make 2D visualization out of them. And so you can imagine that uh, with this highly efficient primitive to render 3D, we can make very efficient uh, 2D visualization. And so uh, this way we developed some high level components, uh, heat map visualization, line visualization that I will show in another tab because it's not working here. Here, so this is a website that we use to document our visualization component. And see here, this is a heat map visualization component that we have developed. Uh, as I said, this is rendered on the GPU with WebGL. We have another visualization that we also developed, which is a line visualization. So quite classic stuff, but as I said, these are very efficient. Uh, we have also scatter visualization here uh, with some tooltip. And we have also this matrix visualization. Uh, it doesn't use WebGL, but still, because we had this performance requirement, uh, this, is virtual, this is a virtualized table. So it means that the data is loaded only uh, when the user has to display it. 
So for now, we are only loading this data here. And when the user is scrolling through the table, if I manage to make this work, perhaps a bit with the mouse would be easier. No. Yep. While the data is loaded dynamically, you can see it's appearing and disappearing a bit. Uh, because it's so we are able to display very huge data set with this because we are only loaded the data that is currently viewed. So let me go back to the presentation here. So these are the high level components that we provide and can be used in other React application. And uh, because we build some low level components such as uh, the canvas, for example, uh, the zoom interaction and so on, uh, we also provide these low level components so that uh, other React application can build their own visualization out of them. But this is for advanced use cases. So this was for H5 Web Lib. Now let's talk about H5 Web App, which is the web viewer. And so I will click on the image to see the demo. And so we land now a web page that is, um, so this is basically H5 Web App, the viewer, that is uh, the current production version that is deployed by our continuous integration pipeline. And so, uh, so I'm here, this is running H5 web uh, visualization, as you can see here. And the HDF5 file that we are viewing right now, uh, with, which has this name, is stored on a remote server. And H5 web makes requests across the web to ask for the relevant data and metadata to uh, display and explore the HDF5 file. And again, for performance reason, because HDF5 files can be very big, then h web only makes a request when it, need, it needs to. So for example, here, um, the, um, I only make requests to see the metadata when I open the relevant tool. <laughs> so I, for now, h web doesn't know anything about what is inside entry 00. And it's when I click on it, that h web will make the web request to the remote server to ask, hey, what is the metadata of this group? And then it will be able to know what is inside. So again, for performance reason. So this is the Explorer panel that I've just talked about to explore the HDF5 file. Here on the right side, we have the display panel to show the visualization. And we can toggle this panel to, have, to go to an inspect panel where we can see the metadata of the current entity. So for example, here, this is a group entity, just this part, this name, and also some attributes. And as I said, HDF5 file um, we use the Nexus convention with HDF5 file at USRF. And one of the requirements when we built uh, H5 web was to support the uh, Nexus uh, default plot, for example. Well, all Nexus, uh, not all, but most of Nexus uh, visualize, um, most, of Nexus, most of attributes that are linked to visualization uh, that are Nexus. So for example, the default plot that tells us that uh, the default plot that should be displayed in this case is the one that is in, his, in this NX data group. And I can click on this to navigate to the appropriate uh, NX data group. And this NX data group, group describes that the plot that should be displayed should be this data set as signal, uh, this data set as axis, and it should be a spectrum. And h web is able to parse this data to generate this plot here with the labels as well as you can see. And here you can recognize the line visualizations that I've just shown you in uh, H5 WebLib that is now used in the web viewer context. And so uh, we have some interactions, just zooming, uh, reset the zoom. Uh, we can change the scale of the, of the axis to have a log log plot, for example. Um, in the case of Nexus, we can have errors on the plot. We can choose to toggle them uh, out and on on or off, sorry. We can choose to display as line, point, or both, and so on. We can also export the data as NPY or CSV. So that's kind of handy for the user, for example, when they don't have access to the HDF5 file, or if they are interested in only one data set. And yeah. So this is the one, uh, one D visualization. We can go to see a 2D visualization. So for example, yep, this one. So as you can see, this is a heat map visualization. And uh, you can see here the power of the WebGL visualization because this uh, data set has almost 1 million points and the display is very quick. And I can change the range of the color map here 
And you can see that the, I can change the scale perhaps as well. Yep. You can see that it updates very quickly. And uh, yep. Okay. Uh, I can change the color maps as well. Again, very quick. And can invert the color map and so on and still export the data. Um, in the case of n dimensional data sets, uh, we can have we have some uh, slicing feature. So, for example, here, if I go on the line visualization for a 2D data set, I'm only able to visualize a 1D slice. And so uh, I have this slicing slider that appears to slice in one direction, uh, in one dimension, sorry. And I can choose the dimensions that I want to display and the one I want to slice. And again, for performance reason, h web is only fetching the current slice that is viewed here. So that means that if you have a very big data set, very big ND data set, uh, you can still choose to visualize only one slice and h web will only fetch the relevant slice. Uh, and yep, so uh, I'm going to go back to my presentation. Okay, now a few words about the data source. As I told you, uh, HR Web was making requests to a remote server that we call a provider, and it is the job of the provider to uh, get the data and the metadata out of the file and to return the data to HR Web. And this provider, in fact, can be changed. The one that I showed you in the demo is called HRAF Grove. It's a simple piece of software based on HRAF Pi that will go into the, in the file and, as I said, fetch the relevant data or metadata. Uh, we developed this ourselves because we needed some support for compression and external links that we made heavy use of, heavy use of uh, at USRF, and we could not find this in other provider. Another provider that we support is HSDS, which is developed by the HDF group, again, to serve HDFR file but this is rather for cloud-based access, so not as suitable uh, for us. And we have another uh, provider that is called h 5 wasm and this completely changed the game because h 5 wasm is able to read HDFI file in the browser, meaning that there's no longer a need for a remote server to serve the HDFI file. Everything can happen in the browser once the HDFI file is loaded in the browser. And because we have this flexible architecture, we were able to use h web in many different contexts. So for example, uh, the viewer with h Grove uh, allows us to develop a JupyterLab extension called JupyterLab h web You can show quickly what it looks like. It's a way to open uh, HDFI file. Here it is. HDFI file in JupyterLab by a simple double click. And if you install this extension with a simple double click, you can use h web to visualize your own HDFI file with all the features that I've just shown you. Uh, we were also able to integrate uh, HRA web in other web applications. So for example, in the, in the ESRF data portal, the user can see the data that has been acquired on the data portal. And with a simple button, if it is an HDFR file, can view it in the browser without downloading anything uh, with HRA web. With HRA wasm so everything in the browser, we were able to uh, develop a VS Code extension. Again, so this is the same principle as a JupyterLab extension. Once you have installed the extension in VS Code, you can use HRA web to visualize your HDF5 file with the same features that I've just shown you. And we were able to do this because VS Code is a web application. And uh, the fact that HRA wasm works in the web uh, make it possible to develop this extension. And while I'm having a good time here in Switzerland, uh, my colleague Axel is working hard to develop this serverless online web application to view HDFI file. So this should be a website where you, be, you will be able to drop an HDFI file in the web and be able to explore it with uh, HDFI web. This is coming soon. We hope to make an announcement in the following weeks. And as for the visualizations themselves that we use in the viewer, where we are also able to use them in other contexts and not only for HDF5 file. So for example, we were able to use them in another web application called Braggy that we developed at ESRF for viewing diffraction image. So you can recognize here the heat map visualization that is used to view a CBF file. And we were able also to add other features on the top of it. So for example, this diffraction rings. Um, also in Daikiri that Stuart presented at the beginning of the week, uh, we can uh, plot beamline control indicator with h web uh, visualization. 
And we are also working to uh, build a very dedicated uh, visualization for very huge tomography reconstruction. So a bit like Google map, but for plotting where the level of detail change when you zoom in in the uh, visualization. So this is my final slide. We are still using, we are still looking for user feedback about the H5 web. We are still developing new features and you can get involved. <coughs> for example, you can try to install the Jupyter Lab or VS Code extension, try to browse your own file and see and tell us how it went. Or if you have a use case for H5 web that pop in your mind uh, while seeing this presentation and you want to discuss it, well, you can get in touch on GitHub, uh, open an issue or discussion thread, or just drop us a line on elfaweb.tsf.fr. Uh, we'd be happy to discuss and exchange with you. Thank you very much. I hope I was not too fast. Not really a question. Thank you for the nice talk. Also, thank you. Uh, thank you for the nice tool. Indeed, uh, I just wanted to say thanks because uh, we also integrated in our uh, NOMA portal and we are happily doing an exercise with it. It's very nice that default plots are coming up and we, we can also explore the platform. Uh, thank you. Yep. Thank yeah. you. I have another question. Yeah, uh, thanks as well. Um, I would just say thank you. It's a nice tool to discuss the authentication authorization things that we saw out on our site to make better use of it. Um, I have an actual question there. So, can you say to bots how to do web page? This, uh, which ones? The... Yeah, for the for the heat map visualization, uh, you can you can save it as stiff. Okay. Uh, for the line visualization, I think we did not have a way to do it right now. But uh, this can. Because you can you can take a screenshot, right? You were using the web browser here. You can try to. Boom. One of the problems we had with the is that they would render graphs on canvas spaces. Yeah. Uh -huh. If a, a user gets involved, you're like, oh, that's beautiful. I'd really like to take that. Put it on my poster, try to put it on my paper. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's an SVG block. You don't do that. And that's not fast. Yeah. How, yeah. Do you, how do you marry the world of canvas based or like texture based rendering to give a really nice, fast plot? Yeah, I think that's challenging. That's challenging. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, don't have. I don't have a quick answer for now. Okay. <laughs> and as I said, for the for the heat map, we you can export it easily as TIFF. But uh, for the, I get I get it that for the line visualization, you would want to add some SVGs that you can then fiddle around afterwards. Uh, but for now, this is not uh, this is not done. And I don't have a quick answer or quick estimate on uh, how you can do because, as you said, this because it's using WebGL, it's texture-based rendering, yeah. and then this the the axis around our SVG. Yeah. But I mean, if we want to do this, if we wanted to do this curve with SVG, we would not get the same performance, but it, right? It, it kind of feels like it yeah, I think, I think I think this is something that we can investigate, but no promise. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I see there is a one more question, but okay, a quick question then. <laughs> does the the web assembly backend for the HDF files does it first transfer all the HDF files to the browser, or does it load incrementally? And if it loads incrementally, what's your experience with respect to the latencies that you typically experience in mobile networks? Which backend you were talking about? The H5 Cosm backend. Ah, yeah, it's loading everything at once for now. Okay. Uh, we are, uh, I think um, the, the guy who is developing it uh, is still looking to look at some, uh, is, you know, he is wanting to have some kind of stream data access to be able to not load everything at once. Because obviously this is a huge limitation, right? If you have a big HDF5 file, then you have to load everything in the browser and this will freeze your browser for a while. And this is, in fact, why we choose at first to have this uh, remote server where we only serve what we need to display. Uh, but uh, yeah, for now, uh, this is a huge limitation indeed. And uh, this is obviously a limitation of the VS Code extension because it's used this H5 wasm. And so, yeah. So that means that once everything is loaded in the browser, then that means that the network that you have does not matter. Because once it's loaded, everything happens in the browser. Network doesn't um, 
doesn't intervene anymore in the requests that are made. So okay. yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry because we are running a bit. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Uh, you can still uh, post some question on Slack as well. Um, no problem. Slack and, and maybe at uh, the dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean for remote person participant, I meant. Thank right. you. Okay. Thank you.